Oh my God. Isn't it fabulous? I am so glad you took it sight on scene. I just knew it was perfect. <laughs> it's amazing, but gee, I'm sorry, this isn't what we talked about. You know, I was thinking of something less. But it's a landmark. John Barrymore, the legendary star, and now you, Andrew Raleigh from LA Medical. <laughs> oh, I love that show. You were adorable. <laughs> Why did they cancel it? Bad time slot, shaky network. I really don't think I can live here. This is not what we discussed. I know. I know, but honey, I'm not just a broker. I want you to be happy. You belong here. Look, it's fine. I'll move back to my hotel. Don't worry about it. But your things are here. It's a match. You and Barrymore. Oh, please. I'm, I'm no Barrymore. Oh, of course you are, Dr. Jim Corman, rookie surgeon. I even love those commercials you do. What is it? Uh, tomboy chocolate? Trail Burst oh, Nuggets. Yeah. It's a breakfast cereal. And... And any time snack, yeah. Any Sure is. It's for you, your first guest. Hello? Yeah, sure, come on up. It's my girlfriend. She can't wait to see the place. Do I know her? Was she on your show? No, I met Deirdre in New York, but you know, I'm from LA. I like modern things. High tech. I mean, come on, look at this place. I mean, is there a moat? Oh. <laughs> Andrew? Yes, Deirdre? A a a Andrew, am I here? This is it. Oh, I worship you. <laughs> I'll get it. Hi. Felicia Dante. Hello. Yeah, sure. Come on up. Isn't this place amazing? The Barrymore thing? The morning it comes on the market, I get Andrew's call. No. Two famous actors. It's freaky. Are you in the business? No. <laughs> William, are you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, say, oh, God, darling. Oh, oh, so, oh, this is it. As I remember. What? Oh, I've been here before. But I had to be certain. Oh, Deidre, you I know. Oh, hello, I am Lillian Troy. I'm Andrew's agent. Scum of the earth. <laughs> Hi, Felicia Dantine. Real estate, I win. Oh. <laughs> What do you mean you've been here before? Oh, it had to have been sometime in the 40s. I had just come to America. Oh, it was magical. Oh, there was this great window and a cottage on the roof and there were flowers everywhere. I had a little fling. Andrew, perhaps you found my hairpins. <laughs> Lily, you had a fling. Mm -hmm. Here. Mm -hmm. In this apartment. Mm -hmm. With who? With whom do you think? Barrymore? <gasps> Lillian! You and <gasps> Barrymore? Now, now, I am an old lady, and the elderly should not discuss romance. It is distasteful <laughs> and creates jealousy. <laughs> and Andrew has such marvelous news. Andrew 
have you told everyone? What? What news? I haven't told because I'm not sure how I feel about it. What? Andrew, what haven't you told me? You know Shakespeare in the Park, right? That big open-air theater down by the lake? Yeah, I went once. It poured. Right on Coriolanus. Didn't help. They kept going. What? Tell us. Well, this summer they're doing All's Well and another one. Which one? Hamlet. <gasps> oh my god. Wait. Laertes? Hamlet. <gasps> the lead? Yes. Hamlet. <gasps> Isn't that wonderful? I don't know why they cast me. Oh, because you're talented. You auditioned five times. They saw something. Dr. Jim Corman, you will pack the place. All of them come. So is it the real Hamlet or like a musical? <laughs> the real one. And of course she's right. They probably only asked me because of the TV show. I'm the gimmick. I don't know why I said yes. Schnooky, we are talking about Hamlet. Wouldn't it be great if we could, like, go back in time and, and tell Barrymore? Why? Well, I mean, he was the greatest Hamlet of all time. Isn't that what people say? Oh, oh, that is very true. I don't know, Andrew, he lived here for many years. Perhaps then he played Hamlet. And now you're here. Oh, I bet this is all happening for a reason. Because you were canceled. <laughs> I get this feeling sometimes in special apartments about the people who lived there. Barrymore. church down the street, the clock in the bell tower. But at six o'clock, that only struck once. Oh my god, just like in Hamlet, right before the ghost of Hamlet's father appears, he comes when the clock strikes one, which means... That we live in New York, where everything is broken. But what if it's an omen? Right, Barrymore, Hamlet, the connection. Maybe he's trying to contact us. Oh, yeah. Maybe he's the one who's been slipping all these takeout menus under the door. Andrew. Don't jump. Maybe he's around. It's possible. Totally. Oh my god. What if we could reach out to him across time and space? Oh, wouldn't that be a great idea? Oh, do not ask me about great ideas. I am German. <laughs> Wait. Guys, you know I'm psychic. Oh, my God. What do you mean? I've made contact with the other side. I go into this pre-conscious state. It's like a trance. And I speak to a spirit guide. A spirit guy. Yeah. My mom. We were real close. After she died, oh, I went into such a slump. I tried everything. Therapy, encounter groups, you name it. Finally, I saw this ad for a course. Spiritual transcommunication. Beyond the physical sphere. So you, you talk to your mother, right. Oh, is your mom gone to? Would you like to make contact with her? No. Why break a habit? Oh my god. The clock, this apartment, Hamlet. Oh, this is preordained. I think we should do it. Do what? Contact Barrymore. A seance right now. Now, I've never tried anyone but Ma, but I've been. <laughs> No, absolutely.
Absolutely not. Oh, you never know. Barrymore may return, as he promised me. Lillian, were you really here with Barrymore? Ask him yourself. Oh, come on! This is just an apartment. There aren't any ghosts or supernatural phenomenon. And we are not having a seance. Do we need candles? Candles are great. Oh, Felicia, will this table work? Perfect. Oh, this is just like at the beginning of Hamlet when the guards call out to the ghost. Stay, illusion. If thou hast any sound or use of voice, speak to me. If there be any good thing to be done, then may to thee bring grace or ease to me. Speak to me. Oh, speak. Stay and speak. Oh, my God. <laughs> Felicia, is this how you normally operate in seances and Shakespeare? Honey, I better broke up for almost 15 years in Greenwich Village. Try human sacrifice and cheese. OK, everybody, sit. Let's see, how should we do this? I know. First, I'll try and contact Ma and see if she can get a hold of Barrymore. Uh, may I smoke? Does anyone mind? Oh, Lillian, it's such a terrible thing to do, and we all love you so much. Do you have to? You know, I really must stop. Smoking? No. Asking. Now, hit the lights, okay, hon? I'm going to enter this trance state. So, Anne, think about what you want to ask Barrymore. Ooh, has he met Shakespeare? Is it hot? <laughs> Lillian, Barrymore is not in hell. I'm sure Felicia never even deals with people down there. Well, if I have a legal problem. <laughs> Put your hands on the table, palms down. It helps the flow. Now close your eyes. Now just clear your minds. Totally blank. Clean slate. Deep, even breathing. someone over there. No, Ma. Well, he's seeing someone. <laughs> Ma, I think he's having a career crisis. He's going to do Shakespeare, and he needs to talk to Barrymore. Right. John Barrymore. Yeah, from the movies. OK. OK, hang on. She needs to know, what do you want to ask Barrymore? What's your question? Andrew, ask. Ask him what? Ask him about Hamlet. Ask him for advice. But I don't want advice. I don't want to play Hamlet. I mean, at least I don't think I do. I mean, I hate Hamlet. <gasps> Yeah. 
Is he? Hold on. Yeah? What happened? Well, Did I get her? Mom? Well, well, you, you talked to her, and, oh. and she tried to contact Barrymore, but, but something happened. <gasps> there was lightning. Oh, oh, it was magnificent. <laughs> Did you see anything? A sign? A woman with rhinestone glasses? I, I don't think so, no. No! We didn't see anything. No Barrymore. Well, not, it's not as far as we could tell. I'm sorry. You know, Ma's really the only one I ever get. It's emotional. That there's got to be a real me. Andy, I'm sorry. No, look, you were fine, and, and I'm glad about your mother. I just can't believe I even considered playing Hamlet. Look, all of this is just not possible. Really? Do me a favor. Do not be like all the others. You know, everywhere I look, I am disappointed. You must have faith. Barrymore would insist. He could still appear. Sometimes you gotta bribe the spirits. You need something they really liked when they were alive, especially for the first contact. Really? What did your mother like? What did you use? Oh, it was tough. I tried everything. Jewelry, sponge cake. Finally, I just said, Ma, it's after 10. The rates are down. Bingo. <laughs> Should we try again? Of course. No, absolutely not. Rally, what has happened to your sense of adventure? You know, television has absolutely ruined you. Oh, oh no, I think the weather's getting worse. I really must get going. I really did only want to get a look at the place. Yeah, I better split too before it starts pouring. You know, it is as I recall. You know, maybe a little smaller, but still a jewel. You know, the elevator is new. <laughs> <laughs> Lillian, are you all right? <coughs> Have you been to a doctor? <coughs> doctors? Oh, oh, I have seen enough doctors. <laughs> Mostly played by you. <laughs> now, Rally, when do your rehearsals begin? I am not discussing this. I know, I need to negotiate your contract. <laughs> Now let's see, it is, it is Shakespeare in the park, it is non-profit, oh, I will make them bleed. <laughs> oh, it's a great space. But don't listen to me. <laughs> I say that in camps. <laughs> Someday, they're gonna say, Andrew Raleigh lived here. A great Hamlet and an anytime <laughs> snack. Out! Bye, kids. <gasps> Excited, and I knew you would tell me I have to do it. Of course you have to. Oh, but why? Because it's supposed to be this ultimate challenge? Because every actor is supposed to dream of playing Hamlet? No, because it's the most beautiful play ever written. It's about how awful life is and how everything gets betrayed. But then Hamlet tries to make things better, and he dies. Which tells us... At least he tried. Well, why do I have to do Hamlet? Look, I could get another show. Maybe even movies. But I don't need Hamlet. Andrew, you went to drama school. Only for two years. But wasn't it wonderful? The great plays, Ibsen, O'Neill. Nothing under four hours. And Shakespeare. Ooh, didn't you love it? Sometimes, but I left. Why? L.A. Medical.
Temple, The Bucks, TV Guy. My face at every supermarket checkout uh, in America right next to the gum. I mean, it felt like, like every day was my bar mitzvah. You know everybody was smiling at me with an envelope with a check? <laughs> I mean, that's what California is. It's one big hug. It's, it's Aunt Sophie without the pinch. <laughs> Andrew, Jim Corman was terrific, but now you're back. On a whim. The show was dead. I thought, come to New York. Why not? Maybe take a few classes. You know, do a new play. Ease back into it. But now this place? <laughs> Hamlet? It's not the plan. Of course it is. It's your old plan. Your real one. Oh, you know the only thing that would be better? Better than Hamlet? The Cliff Notes? Romeo and Juliet. Remember? Remember when we did that scene in class? <clears throat> oh, swear not by the moon. The inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb. Lest that thy love prove likewise variable. And what shall I swear by? Oh, do not swear at all. <laughs> or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. <laughs> my heart, dear love. <laughs> Andrew. Deirdre, yes. will you stay? Yes, upstairs. Isn't there an extra room on the roof? Deirdre. Andrew, you said you understood. I can only give myself to the man I'll love forever, the man I'll marry. So marry me. <laughs> that is so sweet. <laughs> Why won't you take me seriously? Deirdre, I'm not just talking about sex. You believe things, and you almost make me believe. You are Juliet. Exactly. And you'll be Hamlet. Uh, I can see it. Uh, oh, Andrew, I do want to get married, and I do want to have sex. It's just, I've waited so long. I have so much invested in this. I mean, if it wasn't absolutely perfect, it would all just be wasted. I feel so silly. Deirdre, you're a 29-year-old virgin and you tell everyone. I think a fear of silliness is not the issue. But won't it be wonderful once I know for sure? Won't you be glad we waited? Deirdre, sex is wonderful. Take my word for it. It's right up there with unicorns and potpourri and bayberry-scented candles and antique lace. And Deirdre, even Laura Ashley had sex. That's true. Look, when will you know? When will you be sure? Soon, uh, maybe. Oh, I know I'm being impossible, but it's not that I'm a prude. I just want everything. And it's happening. It is? Yes. You're going to be Hamlet. Uh, and I'm going to be Hamlet's oh, Ophelia. Oh, Andrew, could I audition? Would they let me? I guess I could ask them. Would you? And it wouldn't be sleazy because I'm not sleeping with you. <laughs> Isn't that perfect? Deirdre, this is nuts. It's like show business for Mormons. <laughs> it's going to be the best. Good night, sweet. Dad, don't say it. If I can't have sex, I don't know why I should play Hamlet. Sweet prince. <laughs> A test? No sex? Shakespeare? It's like high school. <laughs> Lillian, it's Andrew. Look, when you get this, can you call the people down at the theater? Tell them I'm canceling. Oh, and I'll be back in my hotel tomorrow. So goodbye, Hamlet, and good night, Barrymore.
May I? Thank you. You're him. Am I? You're dead? You know, occasionally I'm not truly certain. Am I dead or am I just incredibly drunk? <laughs> You're Barrymore. Yes, but my father's given name was Blythe. Uh, he changed it when he became an actor to avoid uh, embarrassing the family. Your name? Uh, Andrew. Rally. It's really Rollenberg, but I changed it to avoid embarrassing the Jews. Oh. <laughs> Behold! <laughs> my nest! My roost! <laughs> oh, a grand piano. A Renaissance globe. A throne. <laughs> You're dead! You are dead! What are you doing here? Lad, I'm here to help. Wait. How do I know you're a ghost? You could be uh, an intruder, huh? huh? Perhaps. Cleverly disguised as Hamlet. I'm a ghost, Andrew. I'm not a special effect. But, but ghosts are supposed to have powers, like special powers. Well, I just rose from the dead, Andrew. How was your morning? <laughs> now shall I truly frighten you? Oh, not afraid of you. Shall I cause your flesh to quake? <laughs> you couldn't possibly. Shall I scare you beyond all human imagination? <laughs> Go ahead and try. Mm. In just six weeks' time, you will play Hamlet. <laughs> oh, God. You're really him, aren't you? John Barrymore, actor, legend, seducer, corpse. <laughs> so it worked. The Sands. Felicia, her mother, she brought you back from over there. That was all. You summoned me. I did. Yes, and Lincoln, the proud theatrical tradition, any soul embarking upon Hamlet is permitted to summon a former player. From Burbage to Keene to Irving, the call has been answered. <laughs> wait, wait. So you're here to help me play Hamlet because you did it? Indeed. Well, then fine, problem solved, because uh, I am not going to play Hamlet. No way. So uh, you can just go back to wherever. Well, I'm afraid that's not possible. Why not? Well, I cannot return. I wouldn't be accepted until my task is accomplished. Until you have played Hamlet. Hamlet. <laughs> Precisely. So if I don't go through with it... Well, then I'm here to stay within these walls, trapped for all time with a television actor. <laughs> well, excuse me! I happen to be a very good television actor, and I don't need any dead ham bone to teach me anything. You know, even if I were going to play Hamlet, which I am not, I could do it just fine all by myself. Hmm. Very well. Hamlet. <laughs> to be or not to be? That happens to be the speech I did for my audition, and I got the part. Well, proceed. Yes? I'm doing my preparation. Your preparation? Yeah. My acting teacher taught this to me. Harold Gaffney. <laughs> Harold Gaffney? The creator of the Gaffney technique. Uh. Act to win. I can't just do the speech cold. I have to get into character. I have to become Hamlet. Ooh. I'm doing a substitution. A substitution? Yeah. I'm thinking of something that really happened to me so I can remember the emotion and then recreate it. <laughs> All right, well, what are you remembering? It's a secret. 
Otherwise, it won't work. Be quiet. I am going to act. Why do I feel as if we should spread newspapers about it? I'm sorry, I shall be silent out of great respect. Road closed. Acting. You know, Andrew, I am dead, and I shall be for all of eternity, but I still don't have all day. interpretation wasn't clear, no you disagree with my interpretation, or no you think I'm totally horrible. Yes. I'm horrible? Yeah, at the moment, what are you doing? I was internalizing the role. I was finding an emotional through line. Why? Why? So the character can come to life. So I'll achieve some sort of truth. Truth? Your performance, the pauses, the moans, all you clearly consider invaluable is utterly appalling. We must never confuse truth with asthma. <laughs> what? Uh, I understand the impulse. God knows I lived just long enough to see the introduction of truth into the modern theater. As I recall, it accompanied synthetic fibers in the GE kitchen of tomorrow. <laughs> so you just want me to ham it up? I beg your pardon? Hamming, mugging, over the top, too big, too... Barrymore? Well, you did have that reputation as someone <clears throat> larger than life. Well, what size would you prefer? Gesture, passion, these are the actor's tools. Abandon them and you're left with mere reality. But embrace them with gusto and the arts finesse, and the theater resounds. I do not overact. I simply possess the emotional resources of ten men. I am not a ham, I am a crowd. Andrew, who is Hamlet? A prince? A star. What? A star. -it. The role is a challenge, but far more than that. An opportunity to shine, to rule, to seduce, to wit. What makes a star? Talent. <laughs> Sorry, my mistake. What was I think? A thrilling vocal range, decades of training, the proper vehicle? <laughs> no. Tights. <laughs> Tights. Tights. Where are you looking right now? <laughs> I am not. Of course you are. The potato, the cucumber, the rolled sock. This is the history of Prince Hamlet. You mean you padded yourself? Oh, unnecessary. Even from the balcony. The second balcony. So Hamlet should be horny? No, Hamlet is a young man, a college boy in his sexual peak. Hamlet is pure hormone. Ophelia enters that most beguiling of maidens. Chastity is disgusting. Well, please don't joke, not about chastity. Why, what? I can't talk about it. Oh dear, uh, your beloved uh, <clears throat> problem? A nightmare. Five months. What? Nothing. Truly? Yes, and I tried everything. Necking at the cloisters, the picnics on Amish quilts, sonnets. Not sonnets. Yes, and I've been faithful, totally. It, it's unnatural. Do, do you know what happens when you don't have sex? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thanks. But why? Why her? Or why me? Deirdre won't have sex because She's not sure. Because she's the victim of a relentlessly happy childhood that she fully expects to continue. And you? Me? Why do I put up with it? 
I mean, why have I practically begged Deirdre to marry me ever since the day we met? <laughs> it's because in the strangest way, she is the most passionate woman I have ever met. Because when she sees a homeless person, she gives them a fabric-covered date book. I mean, Deirdre's just... She makes me believe that love is as amazing as it's supposed to be. She's romantic, which means she's insane. And I know I love her because I just want to strangle her. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. A virgin goddess. Please don't encourage her. No, no, no. As you should be honored. She should be treasured. I've known few such women in my sensual history. Perhaps 500 or so. They're the most adorable saints, but uh, <clears throat> there are ways. What? No, it would be unthinkable. What? I could never condone such Casanova-like tactics, such Valentino mesmerism, such Barrymore deceit. Cad? Yes? Nay, please! Hamlet! Don't stop with that! Hamlet, to cunningly expose his father's murder feigns madness. To perfect the pose, he must spurn his beloved. The fair Ophelia, she is undone. But doesn't she kill herself? I mean, I don't want to hurt Deirdre. You'll be merciful. No, that would be dishonest. Oh, well, what would you prefer? Uh, Therapy, perhaps? Continued discussion? What's the present day epitaph? Communication? That absolute assassin of romance? I... Ah. Andrew? Deirdre! Dumb! Andrew, who were you talking to? Well, uh... She has no need to see me. No one! <laughs> I was just, uh, <clears throat> rehearsing my lines, the soliloquies. I've been reading your Barrymore book. He was incredible, but his life, it was so tragic. Yeah. Did you know that in his later years, he was a major alcoholic, and towards the end, when he couldn't find liquor, he would drink cleaning fluid. A black lie? And perfume. As a chaser. I mean, <laughs> he was magnificent, but he was married four times. I was? He would fall madly in love with these women, and then he'd become insanely jealous, and then he'd cheat on them. Oh, Andrew, I want you to promise me something. I know that Barrymore's your hero, and we should all worship him, but please, promise me you won't be anything like him. Do you promise? Swear it! Look, Deirdre, maybe Barrymore wasn't so bad. Maybe? Look, he was very talented, and I'm sure he had a few... Sterling attributes? Good days. Oh, yeah. oh no. He was... Well, do you know the first time he had sex, he was only 14? What book is this? With his own stepmother. Uh, can you even imagine? I'm a Freudian bonus coupon. And after that, there was no stopping him. I mean, he must have been with every woman in New York. He was a matinee idol before he did Hamlet. He started in these trashy plays and women would just swoon right in the aisles. There are these pictures of him from when he was young. <laughs> he was so cool. <laughs> Deirdre. Look at this picture. It, it's him rejecting Ophelia. See, he wore all black, sort of open at the neck. And tights. <laughs> oh, shut up. What? What do you mean? Oh, I get it. You're treating me the way Hamlet treats Ophelia. Andrew, do you think Hamlet slept with Ophelia? Only the Chicago company. Shut up! Oh, Andrew. Hamlet is so mean to Ophelia. He says, get thee to a nunnery. A nunnery? Well, if, if you said that to me, I die! I am not kidding! Oh, Andrew, say it. Like in the play. What? Get thee to a nunnery? No! Like Barrymore! <laughs> Barrymore begins, hmm?
nunnery. Yes. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent, honest, yet I could accuse me of such things. Pause, consider, destroy. That it would have been better if my mother had not bore me. No! I am very proud. Vengeful. With more offenses at my back than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape, or time to act them in. Oh, Andrew, this is making me very nervous. Uh, what would such fellows such as I do? Crawling between earth and heaven, we are earth knaves all. Believe none of us. So go thy ways to an honorary. No! And call my machine. No, my lord, Hamlet. Oh, fair maiden. <laughs> no! Poor lad, within one couplet. <laughs> Shakespeare, the most potent aphrodisiac. I was almost there. I was gonna have sex. It's scary. Yeah. A friend, a director from LA, he did my show. Why is he here? Why? You are Hamlet's study in frustration and thwarted action. Dee! Rally, talk time, Andy Man! <laughs> Fusion has occurred! Yes! Right here. I'll let you guys talk. No. I'm going to go uh, finish my meeting. My leash? Yeah, to a nunnery. Oh! <laughs> Reading? <laughs> She's reading? I don't understand it. <laughs> Still no, uh... <laughs> no, Gary. Still no hand gestures. Oh, man. If I was with a lady for that long and still no return, I don't know. I'd start thinking, trade him, turn around. And who's this? Of course you can see me because it doesn't make a difference. John Barrymore. Barrymore, right. Disney? <laughs> VP. <laughs> no, I'm an actor. An actor? Whoa! Not another one. <laughs> Good luck, big guy. I, I mean it. That's what's great about you two. You're both actors. You're like in direct competition with one another. And you can still give the appearance of friendship. Me? I'm fucked up. I can't be friends with anyone like me. <laughs> Yes, we understand that. You know, the way I monitor, there's only so much bungalow space for so many hyphenates, right? Hyphenates? Writer, hyphen, producer, hyphen, director. Gary Peter Lefkowitz. Oh, I see. So if you also design the scenery, would you require an additional name? <laughs> cute! <laughs> That's cute! Great look! What is that? Japanese? <laughs> Wash silk? Hamlet? Shakespeare? Right. Nice retro. 16th century? Oh, God, other centuries. Like people who weren't me. Okay, tell me, total truth. Am I like the most self obsessed person you've ever met? <laughs> My answer? Yes. Enough about me. Figure of speech. Andy, Andy, boy, we got it. The green light, the go ahead, network approval, a pilot in five episodes. A pilot in five episodes? Of what? Of the show, of, of our show. What are you talking about? Okay, I didn't tell you, because I didn't want you to be disappointed and blame me if it didn't go, but it went. I used your name to tip it through the hoop. <laughs> I told the network it was your all-time favorite project, and you were ready to roll. And after Jim Corman, your network candy, they were crawling. Really? America cries out. Your commitment was just a push. Uh, but, but, but he's not committed. He's uh, playing Hamlet. Uh, well, wait, which network? In the park this summer? Well, like, for some special Hallmark Hall of Fame? It's not for anything. It's theater. Wait, let me get this straight. It's Shakespeare, right? So it's like algebra on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in Central Park with seats tops, what, 500? And the only merchandising is Kenneth Branagh DVDs and mostly Mozart tote bags? And what's more, it's free. So Andy, tell me, who the hell's representing you nowadays? Lillian is all for it. Lillian, Jesus. Andy, I love her, but she's a war criminal. 
I'm not kidding. She's a 10-hour documentary waiting to happen. Fine. Do your little show in the park. Is it a deduction? It's not even dinner theater. What do they sell? Mostly whole wheat brownies with little bags of nuts and raisins? It's snack theater. It's Shakespeare for squirrels. Okay, tell me one thing, one simple thing. Why? Why are you doing this? Are you broke? No, I have savings. Is there a bet involved? No. Andy, are you in some sort of trouble? Yes, Gary, that's it. You finally hit it. Lin-Manuel Miranda has my parents help me. <laughs> Hamlet. And I have to say this, because we're buds, and I cherish that budship. But, but think reputation. Word on the street, when folks, let's call them, I don't know, Hollywood, when they hear you're doing the greatest play in the English-speaking world, they're gonna know you're washed up. Gary. I'm serious. You haven't had any other offers? Nothing? What about commercials? That trail burst crap. Gary, have you seen those commercials? Have you seen what I have to deal with? What? A puppet. A, a furry little chipmunk. Uh, it's it's cute. cute. Puppet. Oh. Have you ever worked with a hand puppet? There's a guy kneeling down by your crotch working the puppet. And he's doing a chipmunk voice into a microphone. So the chipmunk guy, he looks at you and he goes, Oh, Andy, can I have a trail burst nugget? And I say, no, nuggets are for people, not chipmunks. And then he <laughs> starts to cry. And then I... You what? I kiss him. Right on the top of his little chipmunk head! It's great! It's disgusting! It's humiliating! I did not go to college for four years and another two in drama school to comfort somebody's fist! It's not even a decent product. Trailburst nuggets are like sawdust dipped in chocolate and they have more calories than lard. And that's why you're doing Hamlet? Gary, you just don't understand about theater, about why people do Shakespeare. We do it because it's art. Andy, Andy, my honey. Oh, dear. Andy, my prime, multi-talented, prime-time delight. <laughs> you don't do art, you buy it. <laughs> you do TV or a flick, you make a bundle and you nail a Monet. I was at a producer's house in Brentwood over the weekend. Picasso's, Van Gogh, a Rembrandt, all from his TV shows. Look, Gary, I don't just want to buy art. I mean, what would you rather do? Paint a Picasso or own one? Are you kidding? I like to sell one at auction. That's what I'm about. Cash flow, balls in the air, activity. You're my Rembrandt. I am. How much are you going to clear from this Shakespeare deal? Zip, right? No, you're paying them because your time is valuable. A pilot in five episodes, and if it hits, you get participation. <laughs> participation? In syndication. Yup, you get paid every time it airs. First run, rerun, 4 a.m. in Singapore in the year 3000. Basically, you'll be able to buy England, dig up Shakespeare, and get them to write the Christmas show. All right, this, this television show you're promoting, this gold mine, what is it exactly? Okay, the pitch. Gather ye round. Mm. It's not cops. It's not young doctors. Mm. None of that TV crap. Mm -hmm. Great. You're a teacher, Mike Sullivan. You're young, you're idealistic, new to the system. Inner city high school, rough, dope. M1's teen sex. Mm. Wow. Nobody cares. All the other teachers are burnouts, but not you. Why not? Because you care. You're from the neighborhood. You wanna, you wanna give something back. You know, it sounds sort of okay. I mean, almost realistic. I mean, I could deal with real problems. I could be vulnerable. I could mess up sometimes. And at night, when the sun goes down, you have Superpowers! 
superpowers? Well, sure. I mean, who wants to watch that caring, feeling, unwed mother's bullshit? It's over. But at night, when the sun goes down, you're invincible. Modified x-ray vision. You can fly, but, but only about 10 feet up. We're going for real, you know. Great. You know, and at night, you help the community. You help the kids with your powers. Do they know it's me when I have superpowers? No, you're in leather, denim. They think you're just some great dude. Great title, killer title. Night school. The action figures, the posters, the clothes. You could get an album easy. But I don't sing. Well, someone can. <laughs> well, you can keep the trail burst gig. There's no conflict. They'll probably extend. Because now, you're a teacher. Think about it. What's to think about? You got a network commitment. I mean, let's just forget this Hamlet crap. Who are you kidding? <coughs> what do you mean? Andy, I know you. I gave you your break. You're no actor. What? You're better than that. What's an actor? Some English guy that can't get a series. Look, I'm in town. I'm at the Ritz. I'll talk to Lillian, get things rolling. Good to meet you. You act, right? John Sidney Barrymore? We'll keep you in mind. <laughs> Barrymore, any relationship to the dead guy? Distant. <laughs> dead. Man. Think about it. <laughs> Third ghost. Don't say it. But he's right. He's absolutely right. Night school? Ugh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Think about the money. I mean, you had that kind of money. Yes, when I grew older. Wealth is obscene in the young. It stunts ambition. But what about security? What is this mania for security? What's the worst that could happen? That I play Hamlet? And Gary's right, and nobody will hire me, and I end up face down in the gutter wearing rags w without a job or anywhere to go. Should never evening end like that? Why am I even talking to you? Look, look, it's not just about the money. I'm not that superficial. It's the fame. Mm. Do you know how many people will watch night school, I mean, even if it's a bomb? Oh, of course, there's fame in that sort of work. Uh, you may be admired, lusted after, you may uh, acquire all the attributes of a well-marketed detergent. But, then, but there's fame, mere celebrity, and then there's glory. Can you appreciate the difference? Of course. Fame pays better. Fame has beachfront property. I mean, fame needs bodyguards. Glory, only an audience. Oh, come on. The audience has changed. I mean, don't you think if Shakespeare were alive today, he'd be writing normally? I beg your pardon? You know, wouldn't people say, <clears throat> how are you, instead of, how doth thou, my liege? <laughs> what is a liege anyway? And what's a fardel? Look, in To Be or Not To Be, Hamlet is contemplating suicide, right? And he talks about how awful life is, the whips and scorns of time. Correct. Right, and then what he says right here, while he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Mm. Quietus? Bodkin? Quietus means death, and a bodkin is a dagger. And what about this next line? Who would fardels bear? A fardel is a burden, any burden. So why can't we change it? Why can't I just say, with all this garbage in the world, why not just stab yourself instead of dragging your fardels around? <laughs> then it would be clear and people would get it. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. Tell me, if you loathe Shakespeare and if Los Angeles is so alluring, why did you audition? Because my agent made me. And because Deirdre loves Hamlet and because because they asked me. Because they asked you. Uh. Because somewhere, someone thought that maybe, just maybe, that I could do it. That I wouldn't have to be Jim Corman, rookie surgeon for the rest of my life. 
When I was on TV, no one cared if I was talented. I had the right twinkle, the demographic appeal. Pretty soon, I thought maybe that's all I had. That if I didn't show up, they could at least use the poster. But I came to New York, and someone said, wait, maybe Andy Rowley could do Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Say those lines on stage. Act. Yes. But they were wrong. Look, I belong on TV. I know that. And that is not a crime. So look, I'm sorry I got you down here. And I'm sure you could just go back up there and talk to whomever. You can get this whole Hamlet deal canceled. Because you know what? Because I am really tired. And my girlfriend won't sleep with me. And I think my agent is very ill, but you won't want to discuss it. And my life is just one big embarrassing joke. So if you don't mind, please just leave. I'd appreciate it. Can you imagine you're the first performer to experience such misgivings? Can you possibly believe that every prospective Hamlet did not tremble and pale and bolt? Hamlet will change you, Andrew. Make no mistake. And the deal, as you term it, cannot be canceled, and I cannot depart these premises until you have fulfilled your destiny. You come to a crossroad. A decision must be made. What are you to be? Artist? Or lunchbox. Stop it. You're no longer Jim Corman. Well, get out. You're not yet sensitive Mike Sullivan. You don't know that. You are Hamlet. No! Right. Get on! A sword? Where did that come from? Ha! I really should call the movers. I'm going. What? The drama's conclusion. Hamlet's duel and his death. I can't fence. Hamlet can. I can. Look, I, I hate swords. I hate violence. I, I have a gym excuse. As does Hamlet. In the final moments of the drama, he finally takes action. He assumes a tragic stature. He died. A hero. This is why one acts. This is why actors are envied. We are allowed to do these sorts of things. Not anymore. I mean, we, have, we have stunned people for this kind of thing. You know, doubles. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. It's soliloquies, perhaps. <laughs> well done. Look, I, I can't, okay? Look, you're, you're very cute. And I know you just want me to be like you, to, to be like Hamlet. You know, to be bold and dashing and vengeful. Well, no. I don't do that. I'm a liberal. <laughs> Sorry. So no violence, no macho behavior, not in my house. In your house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my couch! You slashed my couch! Yes, it offended me. It's so modern. <laughs> you stabbed me with flowers? You're gonna make a mess! Oh, buy me flowers, residuals! All right, look. The girl does not come until Friday, and somebody is gonna have to vacuum. Not I. <laughs> Alcohol abuse. <laughs> Curtail your precious mediocrity. Imagine your epitaph. Andrew Redding, 
Beloved coward, beloved hack, here lies no one.
Tonight, Andrew's playing Hamlet. And I'll know. <laughs> Gary, that's bad luck. The champagne is for afterwards to celebrate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, big night. Hot stuff. I know, I can't wait. You know, I love Andy. He's a great actor. What if he really sucks? <gasps> he won't. He's going to be glorious. Don't even think that. Well, I hope he's good. Although, with Shakespeare, how can you tell? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's foolproof. Maybe with Shakespeare, there's no difference between bad or good. I mean, everyone's afraid to say it, but uh, on the movies, on the two, you're either funny or you're canceled. You're either good looking or you're best supporting. I mean, you can tell. I mean, but with Shakespeare, it's really hard to tell who's good without nudity. <laughs> Gary, have you ever been to the theater? Well, yeah, not lately. <laughs> Look, can I be frank? I don't get it. The theater, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's like progress. Take it step by step. Back to Neanderthal times. Two entertainment was like what? Two rocks. Boom, boom. Right? Then you had the Middle Ages. You had the theater. And then you had radio. <laughs> then silent movies and sound. Then TV. That's like art perfected. I mean, when you watch TV, you can eat, you can talk. You don't even have to pay attention. <laughs> Not if you've seen TV before. Nice 30 minute chunks. Or, or even better, commercials. Hot guy, hot girl, the beer, it's all there. It's distilled. I mean, when I go to the theater halftime, I'm thinking, <laughs> which one's my armrest? <laughs> shall play Hamlet. I must be alone. Andrew, honey, can't we uh, take you to the theater? Nay, I have dressed, I have drunk, I seek only solitude. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> and Andy, it's working like a charm. I told the network, Andy's not sure. He's thinking, he's doing Hamlet. <laughs> they love it. They know it's a trick, so I'm going for half ownership of the show, or you do Lear. Away! <laughs> Away! I love this guy. So, opening night, what is that? Like, a party? Of course. Photographers? Really? Critics? Oh, Andrew, don't listen. They'll love you. <laughs> it's not important. Not if the movies are on TV. You can really blow and no one can stop you. But tonight, watch out. They're out there. You know, Andy, when I heard you were going through this, I said to myself, maybe Andy's right. Maybe I should just chuck it all. Leave LA. You know, just produce, direct, write Shakespeare. <laughs> but I woke up. Your turn, Andy boy. I got a car downstairs. Anybody? Oh, a car? Uh, a limo? <laughs> you do real estate, right? You gotta come out to Beverly Hills. I know. I dream about it. Beverly Hills. That's my Hamlet. No! We're going. We're going. We'll see you after. Ugh. Look at you. You are so adorable. Just like Peter Pan. <laughs> but for evening. Farewell. Be gone, wench. I know you're going to be the best. And I'm so proud of you. And I'm so glad we're in the play together. Even if I am just one of Ophelia's ladies in waiting, and even if I don't have any lines, the director took me aside yesterday at the dress rehearsal. He said I was very good. But when they announced that Ophelia is dead, I shouldn't scream <laughs> or stagger or grab your sword and try and stab myself. He said the play wasn't called The Tragedy of Ophelia's Best Friend. 
But I understand. My lady. My lord. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! Matches herself, Ophelia, she shall wed you or drown. Mm, we have accomplished much. Vocal assurance. <laughs> Physical technique. And dare I say, even an appreciation of the texts. Indeed. Our achievement is twofold. For not only do I revere the play, but for the first time, I have finished it. <laughs> Welcome, Halliburton, to the Royal Order of Hamlets. The elite, the august, princes and players. We do not step, we strive. We do not speak, we beseech. We whisper, we roar. Brother Hamlet, Slayer King. <laughs> the moment is nigh. I choose my rightful heir. Kneel, Raleigh. I dub, I dub thee. Prince Hamlet of all lower Manhattan, you join an illustrious line. You shall henceforth be known as the greatest American Hamlet. Of all time. Of your generation. <laughs> of my generation? Yes. Why not? Oh, oh, I was just thinking, tonight. <laughs> oh, tonight. <laughs> uh, of course, your performance, minutes from now. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll be fine. Hamlet. Oh, God, Hamlet. Glory. Glory. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Blind, unspeakable terror. That's it. Oh. Oh. Of course you're shaking for the noblest of reasons. No, no, the no. role. The moment. The test. No, look, look. Come with me. Be there. You know I cannot. Then help me. There must be some... Ancient secret of the Hamlets? A trick? Something you've been saving? Of course. Of course. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounce it to you, trippingly on the tongue. But if you mouth it as many of our players do, I had as leaf the town crier spoke my lines. Nor do not saw the air too much with your hand, thus, but use all gently. For in the very torrent tempest, or as I might say, the whirlwind of your passion, you must acquire and beget a temperance that may give it smoothness. Be not too timid, neither, but let your own discretion be a tutor. Suit the word to the action, and the action to the word, with this special observance that you all step not the modesty of nature. For anything so are done is for the purpose of playing, whose time, both in the first and now, was and is to hold as to the mirror up to nature, to show virtue her own feature, scorn her own image, and the very age and body, the time, his form and pressure. Now this overdone, or come tardy off, though it may make the unskilled laugh, cannot but make the judicious grieve. Now go, make you ready. I don't think so. Go make your ready. It's all there in the text at your service. <laughs> I can't do that. What you just did? I mean, who do I think I am? Andrew, your fear has a history. My opening night? Oh, good lord. <laughs> but you, you were Barrymore. Oh, Barrymore. I was a light comedian attempting Olympus. There was a family reputation knocking about my neck. Before the curtain rose, I sat on the stage in darkness, paralyzed with fear. But you weren't some TV clown. I mean, you were still doing theater. Don't overestimate the form. Would you like the titles of my boulevard triumphs? Hmm? The Fortune Hunter, Claire de Lune, Princess Zim Zim. <laughs> what if Gary's right? What if the critics hate oh, me? Oh, newspapers. What if I hate me? You have prepared for this evening. Yeah, but when you played Hamlet, 
You prepared for six months in country, just learning the role. You have been diligent. Oh, sure, but in six weeks? And tonight, people are going to be there. I mean, not just critics, but my family, my friends, people who saw me in a second grade school play and who might expect an improvement. <laughs> and Deirdre, she will adore you. It's not automatic. Deirdre wants me to be a, a hero, an immortal. What if that doesn't happen? What if I disappoint her? It's impossible. Look, up until now, I have been plugging away, trying to be Hamlet, trying to be like you, but now... Andrew, this is not your first opening night. Your panic, your doubt, it's all to be expected. Look, this isn't just stage fright. This is something else. What? Common sense. Oh. Look, I thought I could come back to New York and prove some ridiculous point to myself. To everyone. <laughs> Instant actor. Just add Shakespeare. I, I don't think it works that way. Why not? Because I'm going to be on stage tonight with real actors. I mean, people who know what they're doing. I just, Jesus, why did I listen to you? I could be in L.A. right now making a fortune in pants. <laughs> Is that what you'd like? Is that what I've taught you? It's what I know. Oh, enough. You are an unbearable brat. Your sniveling is a disgrace. The words of Shakespeare, be worthy. Oh, come the on. The role of Hamlet, be grateful. Come off it. What? Oh, listen to yourself. Excuse me? Look, after you played Hamlet, you left the theater and you never came back. It's unimportant. It's unimportant. No, I read all about it. After 101 performances, you went right to Hollywood. For a time. For the rest of your life. That's my affair. <laughs> Look, you lived in Beverly Hills in a mansion with a yacht in a screaming room. And how many wives? Quite a few. You made movie after movie. Some of them classics. Most of them garbage. Yes. Yes. And after a while, I even had trouble with those. There was a day on set when the was rolled. I couldn't remember a line. Nothing. Take after take, not a word, not a speech, just haze and then terror. And, and I wasn't drunk, I was, I was stone sober. And everyone was more than kind, and there were words scribbled on shirt sleeves and on cardboards held just out of camera range, but I knew. I knew instantly. I could never return to the stage. John Barrymore, the great classical actor. An example to us all. A hopeless, unemployable lush. Public embarrassment, the off-color joke. Yes, yes, I, I ran to Hollywood, you're quite right. And you can't imagine the life I led. I was a movie star, do you know what that means? My face five stories high and six zeros wide. But before all that, in my prime, I faced the dragon. I accepted a role so insanely complex, so fantastic and impossible, that any attempt was only that, an attempt. And I stood in the light in front of a crowd, fully prepared to dismiss, to deride, to depart. And I shook them. I wooed them. And I said, yes, you will stay. And yes, you will remember. And for that time of my life, I used everything that I knew. Every shred of talent, every ounce of gall. I was John Barrymore! And for those sacred evenings, there was no shame. I played Hamlet. Have you? Yes? Yes, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'll be right down. Go ahead. I will catch. 
catch up in a cab. Lillian, I have to do this, don't I? Oh, oh no, 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 you stay here. We'll cancel the production. I'd be so proud. <laughs> I can see you, you swine. How? I am very old. I can see everything. <laughs> and it so happens I knew you. You do? I knew you would not remember. Could it be? What? No. Yes. Is it you? Well, I was very young. Yes, uh, a young wife of a uh, conductor. A violinist. A violinist with a mistress. Oh, bravo. Let's see, I, I was in town promoting a film. Uh, there was a cocktail party. <laughs> Your husband was to meet you there. He did not. Oh, do not be so smug. You were married as well to an actress. Actress, is that even legal? <laughs> I found you sobbing in a coat room. Oh, I did not sob. And out of anger, we came here. Out of madness, out of temporary insanity. And we had a fire. Oh, and there was candlelight. And we sold champagne from the party. Oh, and we bought chocolates from the five and dine. We broke every commandment. We made love. And gained bait. <laughs> you were impossible. Oh, and you were Barrymore. But? No, I... What's the matter? You are far too kind, and I am undeserving. I have failed utterly. I... I returned for a single purpose What's and... your purpose? That Andrew should play Hamlet. So it is done. There's more. There, oh God, there's so much more. I, I wanted Andrew to learn. To learn what? From all that he accuses me of. From my sorry excuse of a life. I, I was offered the planet. Every conceivable opportunity. Andrew is my last vain hope. My cosmic lunge in redemption. Tell me, Barrymore, when did it happen? What? When did you turn scoutmaster? Excuse me? Rarely is a big boy. Now you have pushed him as have I, and he needed that. Uh, but tonight must be his, and his alone. Then why did you stay? What is it you want? I am like anyone else. I came to see Barrymore. Oh, a sideshow. Oh, a three-ring circus. A true oddity. A movie star and a Danish prince. A womanizer, but never a beast. A drunkard, but, well, at least until recently, never a bore. I came here tonight hoping for one last encounter, an encore. But it was long ago. Perhaps I remember incorrectly. I will go. Lillian, hmm? will he be all right, Andrew? Who can say? Have I helped him in any way? Ask him. Then he returns. Any more questions? Yes, just, just one. Your husband, is he well? Oh, goodness, I hope not. <laughs> We're divorced. You were named in the lawsuit. Divorced? <laughs> One last encounter? I am old. I am dead. <laughs> I no longer die. Well, make an exception. Fool. Fraulein. Ma. 
I am lit. Question that many ask. A question about certain activities and their practice in the next world. Oh, oh! You mean activities of a of a physical nature? Aren't you curious? Surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> are for people, not chipmunks. <laughs> oh, all right. But remember, Trailburst Nuggets are a delicious breakfast treat and an anytime snack. Trailburst Nuggets, it's a breakfast treat and an anytime snack. <laughs> yes? So? So? Your performance, tell me! What, what, am I to remain despised? An ogre without question? Um, forbade uh, any results of my labor? Uh, forbade even uh, so much as a word or a meager report? So you want to know how it went last night? Well, if you wish to impart the information, if you've not grown too grand, too uh, swollen with triumph. Who writes you? <laughs> Just tell me, I've earned it. Mm. First you tell me. Yeah. This whole deal thing, after I've performed Hamlet, you can go back, right? Correct. And we'll never have to see each other again. <laughs> Agreed. So nothing depends on the quality of the performance. I don't believe so, no, why? Because it did not go very well. In fact, I was awful. No. I'm sorry. I mean, it wasn't a fiasco. I remembered my lines, but... That was about it. Oh, it's impossible. I, I'm sure you were marvelous. Believe me, I wasn't. It wasn't a disaster. But maybe it would have been better if it had been. You know? At least more memorable. Like the Hindenburg. <laughs> or a power blackout. Yeah. Years from now, people would say, hey, where were you the night Andy Rowley played Hamlet? <laughs> Nine months later, hundreds of unexpected babies would have been born, <laughs> laughing hysterically. This is cheap vengeance. This is cheap vengeance against me. I'm sure you were more than acceptable. Far more. Nope. 
And I've been walking all night. Where? Oh, everywhere. The park, Fifth Avenue, all the way down to the Battery. All right, well, were you accosted? Once. Two guys with a knife. I just said to him, hey, fellas, look at me. What do you want? A farthing? A doubloon? <laughs> then they recognized me from TV. <laughs> the wrong show. I just kept walking. It is 7 a.m. What is going on around here? I'm coming. Yeah? Yeah, come on up. It's Gary. Oh, Gary. Cloud of Malibu ozone, that cultural cavity, night school. Is that what you're doing? I guess we'll find out. Oh, well done, Andrew, well done. Here's to all the money you can make and all the pride you can swallow. Here's to the challenge and the risk and the worst possible role models. You should join me, Andrew. This is very good champagne, and after all, you can afford it now, hmm? Lucky dog. Hey, Emily! Big guy! Where were you last night? You missed it! Look what I got. The papers. <laughs> or did you already see them? No. Well, let's have a look. Aren't you curious? You know, there's something to be said about a person who brings the paper in with glee. <laughs> Shouldn't you be hooded? Uh-oh. No way. <clears throat> Let me. A not uninteresting attempt. Far to go if Mr. Alley is to seriously consider a career on the boards. Blah, blah, blah. Find supporting cast, DDD. Hey, remember, it's free. <laughs> not bad. You left out TV lightweight. <laughs> well, that's not so bad, huh? Could have been worse. I mean, personally, I thought you were terrific. Like I could tell. Gary. I warned you. I said, Andy, it's not for you. But hey, you learned, right? In front of all those people, shuffling all those feet. <laughs> I was there. I know, I know. Back to reality. I wanted to stop by before I took off so I can call the network. Are we on? Start pre-production. I know you're to say yes. I know, I know. But allow me to polish the part. <laughs> <laughs> Tickle the truth. You cut it, Gary. What's the offer? The money? It was a feeding frenzy. First season, 24 episodes, guaranteed 10 million. That's right. $10 million. Even if it's a dud, it's enough. One year you're out to lay back, to breathe. A house, houses, cars. No, for your folks, for all they've done. Or if you hate them, rub them out, the money's there. <laughs> and if it hits, you're tied up for a few years. But triple it, quadruple it, keep going. Picture it, one day you wake up, and no matter what happens, <laughs> you're rich. Something goes wrong, something breaks. It's not so bad. It's never gonna be so bad. <laughs> Why? You're rich. It's like they say about the rich. They're different than you and me. They're rich. And now, on the other hand, and I'm just blowing smoke here, pretend you're out of your mind. Pretend you say no. Pretend you stick around here in the theater, L Footlights. And after a few years, here you are. <laughs> no offense, another out of work actor. Not so young, not so networked. Maybe you wait tables. Oh, sorry, Major D. Eventually you move, because you can't afford this place. Occasionally you get work. Off, off, nowhere. It's Chekhov. It's a basement. It's July. There's folding chairs, Andy. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just doing my job as a bud. $10 million plus all expenses and a personal staff. 
folding chairs, Andy. And you fold them up after every show. <laughs> AA needs the hall. <laughs> Andy, boy, are we on? A network commitment. Full season. Ten million dollars. No tights. No. No. No! No. No what? No, you don't like the figures? No, you don't like the time slot? No. Just no. Andy, you don't get it. In LA, there's no no, you know? Like, yes means sure, unless I get a better offer. And no means yes, with more money. No, this is a New York no. A surgical no. A final terminal no. Oh, a maybe. No. Gary, it's a no as in, Gary, would you be interested in producing a documentary on acid rain for PBS? Talk to him. Talk sense. <laughs> no. <laughs> Andy, you're saying this now, but what about tomorrow? The next day? When the bills start coming in? When you're flying? Coach! I'm sorry. Andy? Think about me. <laughs> Think about the money I can make with this. Don't be selfish! A pity, Andrew. He's, he's begging. <laughs> you. This is all your fault. You made him do that Hamlet crap. Me? I didn't even see the play. I was at home watching television. I'm an American. <laughs> Tell them, who needs Andy Rail? Dime a dozen. That, that's good. No, oh, that's great. Who can I get? Gary. Uh, ten million dollars? <laughs> when would you need me? Yeah. Hey, in the car. We're gonna miss the plane. Felicia? Hi, hon. Andy, I need to make some calls. Damage control! Would you go in the kitchen then? Hon, what can I say? Last night, were you terrific or what? I mean, the part I saw. The part you saw? Well, I caught the first act where you were so confused. But at intermission, I got thirsty and, well, Gary has a bar in the limo and, Andy, I'm sorry. One thing, um, led to another. Wait, wait the two of you? <laughs> Perfection. Yeah, and all things to you. And Shakespeare. So you only saw one act last night? Honey? Both of you. I am sorry. So, how did it end? You're king now, right? No. I'll are you going away with Gary? Yeah, to L.A. long weekend. Oh, this is a great place. I told you. I just wish we could have made contact with Barry Moore. But you know, I've been thinking. Maybe ghosts don't really exist. Even Ma, maybe it's all in my mind. No afterlife, no other side. Nothing. No, who knows? We gotta split. Andy, I'm coming back for you. And even if I have to tie you up, drug you, and slam you in a cage, you're making money. Don't you have a plane to catch? We'll call you. From the plane, buddy. And Andy, this theater thing, we'll beat it together. Deirdre? Deirdre? Deirdre, are you okay? Well, Deirdre, I'm sorry I ran off last night after the show. I'm, did you go to the party? I hope you had a good time. Deirdre, what is going on?
Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. Look, would you stop that? Stop what? Stop moaning. I, Deirdre, did you go to the party last night? Party. The party. After the play. We were in Hamlet last night, remember? Mm -hmm. Now, perhaps I should leave you two alone. No, stay! Uh, oh, of course I'll stay. <laughs> Andrew, last night, you were so wonderful. Uh, no, look, Deirdre, I wasn't. I, look, I, I wish I could have been good. I wish I could have been everything for you. But you're waiting for a hero, Lancelot, or Mark Antony, and, and I wish I could have been that for you. And I'm sorry. Andrew, I watched you on stage last night, and I thought, he has worked so hard. He's put his heart and soul into this, and at least partly for me. And he's so bad. <laughs> and I thought I'd be demolished, but something happened. I mean, people were coughing and a plane had just flew overhead. And there were all those mosquitoes. Right in my mouth. And you just kept on going. And I thought, what makes a hero? It's just someone who tries to do what's right despite impossible odds. Like you playing Hamlet. <laughs> oh, you're the bravest, noblest man I've ever met. Really? Yes. But then I thought about how I put you off and, and I was just a lady in waiting and I thought, oh, I'm not worthy. So you know what I decided to do? Something sensible? Exactly! I decided to drown myself like Ophelia in Central Park Lake. Oh, isn't that perfect? So I went behind the theater, and I stood up on a rock, and I breathed wildflowers into my hair, and I sang Ophelia's body song. I'm glad. And I was so upset that I came back here and I ran up on the roof and I stood at the edge and I gazed up at the moon and I said, oh, Mr. Moon, you're so big and round and yellow. Deirdre. I know, I know, please. I thought, Deirdre, everyone's right. Get some help. <laughs> Felt what? This breeze on the back of my neck. Except it really wasn't a breeze. It was more like a hand. A hand. A caress. No. No. Uh, yes. And, and that's all I can remember. Except I woke up this morning in the room up there and there was a rose on my pillow. A red rose. A red rose? For passion. And my copy of Romeo and Juliet was open right to one of Juliet's speeches. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. And all I could think of was you. <laughs> oh, Andrew, <laughs> I'm worthy. <laughs> Get thee right now. <laughs> Kill you!
有有你，没一个这什么 suicidal， 这这是我说老味儿的。Of you. What did you do? I'm not Andrew. I am a ghost, a spirit, a very more. How dare you? <laughs> Look, swear it. Nothing happened between you and Deirdre. Oh, please! You wouldn't understand. It was a moment of Shakespeare, a purely lyrical moment between two lyrical souls, as assisted by moonlight, as a midsummer's night dream. <laughs> Much ado about nothing. <laughs> as you like it. <laughs> So all's well that ends well. Indeed. However, I am utterly perplexed. Ten million dollars in your precious LA. Why not go? You know what stopped me? <laughs> of all things, Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you were ghastly. You said so. Deirdre agreed. Everyone in New York, all the newspapers. I know. I heard. And that's the thing about it. You know, last night, right from the start, I knew I was bombing. I sounded real big and phony. You know, real me, thou. And then I started rushing it. Hi, what's new in Denmark? I just could not connect. I, I couldn't get a hold of it. And while I'm out there you know, babbling, I, I look out. And there's this guy sitting in the second row, a kid, like 16, obviously dragged there, and there's Johnny, and he's jiggling his leg, and he's on his phone, and I just want to tell him, hey kid, I'm with you. I can't stand it either. I couldn't do that. So I just kept feeling worse and worse, just drowning. And I thought, okay. All my questions are answered. I'm not Hamlet. I'm no actor. I mean, what am I doing here? But then I got to the soliloquy. You know, the big job. And I am right in the headlights. And I thought, out of hell with it. Just, just do it. To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. And it just kept going! I finished the speech and I look out, and there's the kid. And he's listening. The entire audience. Just complete silence. Total focus. And I was Hamlet. And then it lasted for about 10 more seconds, and then I was back in hell. And I stayed there. But for that one speech, for that one moment, I got it. I had it. <laughs> Hamlet. And only 8,000 more lines left to go. <laughs> well, there it is. Hmm? The glory of Shakespeare. Hamlet has changed you. Altered your course. Yes. And I love this apartment! Because it's like a stage set. It's, it's like a theater. And because once upon a time, you lived here. Brother Hamlet. Player King. <laughs> Look, stay. Teach me. Oh, no, you've learned all that's important. You've tasted glory. Now reach skyward. Surprise everyone. And someday, and Andrew, this, this I promise you, someday you will perform hmm? indoors. <laughs> <laughs> now you have a show to perform, and, and I must go, and you have a <coughs> uh, matinee. <laughs> will you get out of here? I'm on my way. But one parting request. 
I was unable to see your debut, but I must see your bow. My bow? Ah, yes, as, just as I suspected. What? Well, it was perfunctory. A, a bow should be theater incarnate. Well, then show me. No, no, I can. Well, oh, all right, all right. Begin in a day is still lost in the drama. Hmm? Oh. oh, good lord. Is that an audience? <laughs> me? Oh, into the light. Yes. Oh, all oh, my children. <laughs> and the poor. <laughs> and the company, but don't, don't spoil them. Now for the big moment, the finale. Your humble servant. <laughs> no, no, really, no, thank you. No. <laughs> oh, oh, I love you all, especially the deaf. <laughs> oh, thank you, and off. Virginia Smokehouse. On Rye. <laughs> now you. <sighs> ah, and for the full effect, ring down the curtain. Yeah, damn. 